This is fine. So a couple of things you can do here. Okay, but what's this tool called that you're using here with the blue, so the, and the blue pieces? Okay, this is called a go-bar deck. And um, they can be as simple as just four rods. I guess you could do three. But uh, four rods, uh, two inch or two foot long. Um, you can use um, three quarter, um, not three quarter, three eighths or a half. Um, this is just uh, PEX uh, because that's ETSU's color. If we were in Alabama, we would have used the red. What um, about all orange for Auburn? Why are you assuming crimson red? What the heck, Bill? War eagles. That's um, right. Better than an so elephant. A couple of things. Um, can I have a straight edge? Straight edge. Straight edge. There we go. Is this straight enough on the right edge? Yeah. Yep. So one of the things I like to do, this is unnecessary. You need a pencil. Where are pencils? Where's the one in your apron? Come on, Bill. So if you'll notice on these um, things here, we do have uh, little tick marks, the two little teardrop shapes. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the um, center line, so we can actually get this thing. Now this is a spherical radius, so it doesn't really matter where it goes. But being an engineer, they an look engineer, flat to the naked eye, they look a, little, flat. a little OCD. Yeah. So the line? I, I, this, this is just the, the thing going on there. These have a 25 foot, 300 inch radius. Uh, so these are basically dishes. And what you want to do, I like to just center this thing up. Once you've got these pieces where you want them, this is the nice thing about having the outline. You can kind of pre-position them where you need to go and line these kind of up with the center line. When we go to glue them, uh, a couple of things you can do is actually, oh, we, we have a breakage. Did we I do. Use? Okay. That was when I tried to chisel. Told you not to use his. Right, so we can, <laughs> you can fix that with a little super glue if you want to, or just leave it and then. Um, it'll glue down. Yeah, glue down. Um, one of the things you want to do here is start using these rods. We have an assortment of rods um, of different strengths and different types. And believe it or not, these are really nice. These are just made out of um, laser cut uh, tempered hardboard, but they have slots in them. And this is what we'll use for the vertical pieces sometimes, because you don't need a lot of force. You're not really forcing them down, you're just holding them in place. So we, I think these came from um, a fishing, a wire fishing kit that you buy at Harbor Freight. Uh, these were from the four foot, nominal four foot reflective markers that you buy at Lowe's. Um, and these we got from, um, Blues Creek Guitars. We'll give you a list of, of uh, Where did you get the end caps? The end caps, um, you can just get them. Um, I, these I got off, off the interwebs. Just search for whatever diameter you have. And we also have some of these big, big ones. Um, and these are, these are massive little puppies. And the thicker they are, obviously, the less they bend. So, um, and we have two links. We have a nominal uh, 21 inch, I think is what these are. And um, these are 17. When we go and put the sound box together and you're putting your top and your bottom onto the sides, um, you'll use the 17 because it's thicker. <laughs> Duh. And so, um, these right here, you kind of want to get an idea of what you're going to be using. Mm -hmm. So, which is why you want to spend a little bit of time and dry fit these. Um, typically what we do is we work in pairs. And in our class before, it works out real well. 
And one person, we uh, put blue, these are blue bottles from Dollar Tree, hit two for a buck. Um, these are the um, pet dishes uh, that have a wide base so students can't tip them over and get um, glue everywhere and they just rinse out. So um, we got that. These are um, clamps and these are the clamps we use uh, when putting these together and um, getting those ready to go. Um, and you can either do these before and get them all lined up perfectly and um, put the base down and get it pinned and glued and then add these later or you can put these down and then add these just real quick um, and then not really worry about it. One thing that I learned from doing this is that don't worry about getting rid of all those squeeze out. Uh, just let it be there and don't smear it all over the wood. Uh, let it harden until it gets to that plasticized state where it's kind of the consistency and apparently the same molecular structure as those cheese slices you get that are wrapped. <laughs> and then you can take a little knife in there and just uh, run it down there and separate it and you get a very clean glue joint. I never knew that until I started doing this. So um, the idea here is you've got this, you've, um, like I said before, we have a, this is like 2B2, and so here's our, our 2B, um, thank you. I've been waiting all morning for that <laughs> joke comment. All right, I'm just going to use B1 then. Um, use B4. <laughs> or after. <laughs> So when you put these together, the A is going to face the uh, neck, the B will typically face toward you, and the lettering goes to the outside. It's just cleaner than the burn mark on the bottom. Um, I tried to put all these letters where they really wouldn't be seen unless you went looking for them. In fact, while we were doing prototyping, we would write backwards and upside down so you could only read some of the things that we said using a mirror inside the um, thing. This, this is because we had a laser and I had time. Um, and felt like screwing people. Um, but you'll get these together, dry fit them, and like I said, make sure that these are notched and then they'll fit in nice. When you go to glue these, the back is easiest. We usually take right here and you can extend these lines and then just kind of paint in the lines. We're not globbing glue in there, we're just wetting the wood mm -hmm. and so that way you don't have a lot of squeeze out. Uh, you can't work too slow but you don't have to work fast and sloppy. So you can extend these lines to where um, you know we just have nice lines to paint inside. We have one person paint this and then put the go bar rods and then the partner is sitting here with the glue and then painting this part right here and so while one person is painting and putting them together the other person's putting them down and that way you get pretty good throughput and um, they need to sit for 45 minutes um, at some point everybody will have go bar decks that are used and we've run out of stuff and it's time to kind of, I guess, start working on next a little bit. So, Bill, is, I'm sorry, okay. Doug. So if I understood what you just said, just to make sure we're all on the same page, they're applying glue to the back and to the brace. I, I put glue on both, but don't put it on thick because then you just get a lot of squeeze out. And so once we have this, this lined up um, and you're ready to go, um, I go ahead and put these in um, with the go bar rods and it's pretty simple oh, you're, I get you're going to do this and this and is going to give you the tension. Um, the tension and so part of this is knowing where you're going to be and um, what you're going to be doing oh, so wrong. this is what he meant when he said dry fit. If anybody right. doesn't know that term, dry fit means no glue. So he just did okay. one go bar dry fitting that on there. 